Yeah, so we actually publish our numbers once a quarter, um, what the trends are in online video pricing. And we've seen a pretty consistent trend of about a dollar to a dollar fifty reduction in CPM every quarter uh, since we started the company. Um, and there are different perspectives in the industry whether this is good or bad. But my personal perspective is that the prices have been inflated. There's been a false equilibrium in the market about scarcity of quality inventory. Uh, and as the price has dropped, we've seen much larger budgets come into the category. So generally speaking, as long as the price doesn't continue to fall to the bottom, but finds you know the appropriate equilibrium, which is probably in the low teens uh, for on a CPM basis. We'll see larger budgets come from television. Larger budgets meaning just more content or more inventory or more outlets or. How, where is the growth opportunity here? The growth opportunity is clearly ad dollars coming from other mediums. People often say we need to take dollars from television. I actually think television is like the hardest category to take money from, but there's outdoor, there's print, there's radio, there's lots of categories that are underperforming and inventory is actually shrinking or being perceived as lower value. So when I say ad budgets, I just mean how much media is being bought in online video and it's definitely growing, but we'd like it to grow faster. So tell us about your business. Uh, I assume you take a percentage of the sales, or tell us a little bit about how that works. Yeah, so we're not an arbitrage display network or structure as an arbitrage network. We're really partnered with the publishers, so we make a percentage of the money that's spent on their sites. Uh, we try to. Sorry, and who pays you? Uh, the ad agency typically pays us. There are some direct advertisers, but mostly ad agencies. And we try to keep the, the share that we make the same across every site so that we don't have an incentive to you know, run a campaign on one site versus another. We really want to do what's best for the brand, which is generally unique to their campaign. And, and how does the compensation work? Is it it's a percentage? Does it vary? Is it standardized? Or Yeah, we generally make a percentage of the ad spend, but we don't share what that percentage is for obvious reasons. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you this. Pre-roll is still reigning supreme. Um, overlay, what's happening? What are the trends you're seeing in terms of in-stream um, media units? Yeah, I think overlay is irrelevant from our perspective. It's never been a significant portion of the business. If you take YouTube out of it, it's it's basically zero. So the main business today is in-stream and in-banner video. I think the most interesting thing we're seeing... you meaning pre-roll or... Pre-roll, is pre mid-roll is in-stream, and then in-banner video is generally rich media. Um, the, the sort of most innovative thing we've seen recently is what's called interactive pre-roll. So it's a 30 second or 15 second ad in which the user can actually interact with the video during the ad, maybe you know explore more content, watch a longer video, et cetera. Uh, I think there's a lot of standards that have to be solved, but if we can solve it as an industry, it's, it could be a huge uh, boom to all of us in the category. Do you think at some point uh, in-stream advertising can be annoying? Uh, <laughs> what is sort of the limits? Uh, and, and what do you tell people? Probably you have ad agencies who want to do all kinds of crazy stuff. I mean, how do you describe, and I, I, there's not a universal user um, aesthetic, but what do you tell advertisers about how to be successful but don't overdo it? Yeah, I think in, in most forms of advertising are somewhat annoying to the consumer, but you know, free long-form video content is actually great. So there's obviously that trade-off, and it's, that's sort of why content has prolifer proliferated. Um, but how we communicate with advertisers is we just say, you know, keep it within the reasonable bounds of what a consumer would expect. A three-minute ad before a two-minute piece of content doesn't make sense, but a 30-second ad before great content makes a ton of sense. And I think that um, you know, this is why we work with great publishers because their content sort of deserves advertising, whereas, you know, if it's bad content, it, they're never going to, you know, no one would ever want to see an ad before because they don't value it, right? So they haven't earned the right, essentially, to, to serve an ad in front of their content. And uh, tell us about standardization. Are we in a good place? Is there a lot more work to be done? Uh, Tell us about that. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in a better place than we were, but there's a lot of work to be done. Um, I just moderated a panel where we talked about the vast standard. I asked everyone what percentage are we to completion of that being a standard, and everyone said kind of around 25%. I think that's right. I think we are, we're making progress, we're moving in the right direction, but it is, a, it is an unsolved problem today. However, once it is solved, I think it'll help everybody in the category because it is a huge barrier for advertisers today. Tell us about Bright Roll, just sort of some of the latest developments, metrics, updates. 
Yeah, I mean, a few big announcements for us recently have been performance pricing. So we have a cost per engagement, cost per completed video, uh, and cost per click product, which really uh, you know helps for performance marketers and people who want to buy on something other than traditional metrics. Um, and most recently, we announced behavioral targeting, which you could call data targeting or audience targeting. But it essentially allows you to target either demographics, such as men, women, um, certain ethnicities, et cetera. Um, interest categories like shopping, you know, computers, uh, electronics, cameras, et cetera, and then intent, which would be you know travel or auto or someone who's actually in market for a product. Uh, we think it's very early in video for this to be uh, a product out there, so we're excited to be on the forefront. Uh, but I think. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I I don't know. Do you have a BlackBerry or is it on? I have BlackBerry here. Might be mine. I know mine is off. I I don't know. Could you turn it off? I, I don't know. It's. You just put it on the chair. Over there. Just. <laughs> I got a little bit of uh, interference. Okay. So let's just take that. Let me, uh, Todd, tell us a little bit about what's going on with you, some of your new announcements and where the company stands. Sure, yeah, we, uh, we just announced performance pricing, which uh, for us is cost per engagement, cost per completed video, and cost per click pricing. We think this is a, a big innovation in the category to let advertisers buy on a different metric than purely CPM. And we just announced uh, behavioral targeting, which some people call data targeting or audience targeting, but it lets you target three segments. One is demographic categories, you know, men and women, age groups, groups, uh, interests such as computers, electronics, digital cameras, shopping, etc. Um, and then intent. So I'm in market for an automobile. I'm in market for a purchase, a travel to Hawaii, etc. Uh, we think this is going to be a huge part of the business over the next two to three years, and we're happy to be, you know, kind of early in the category. And tell us a little bit about uh, traffic. Um the scope of your business now. Yeah, so we were measured by Comscore for the first time in April, and in May we were the third largest video property as measured by Comscore. We're fluctuating somewhere between three and nine in the list, uh, which excites us because it means we have the same scale today as you know Hulu, AOL, Disney, and other major properties. Like Display, we will be larger than all those properties within the next you know six to twelve months. YouTube will still be number one; they're just so massive. But uh, we will definitely be in the top you know two to five for the foreseeable future.